Since the 1890s, visitors have come to San Francisco's Golden Gate Park, to the bison paddock, to get a look at this shaggy beast, the icon of America's Great Plains. And we might be well to ask, what on earth is a herd of bison doing in the heart of San Francisco? And the answers to those questions might reveal something about California's history uh, and the way that it has seen itself uh, and the things that it has left unseen at the same time. In 1891, the park superintendent of uh, Golden Gate Park purchased a bison from a private herd in Kansas uh, that was among the very last of the bison that were in the midst of the great wars for the plains and a war upon the bison, which was a war upon the plains Indians. Uh, there were, by 1890, fewer than a thousand animals left of the herds of 30 million that may have been there uh, as late as 18, 1850. Uh, it was a holocaust, an environmental holocaust, waged against uh, one of the great uh, land mammals of the world and certainly the greatest of the remaining land mammals of, uh, of North America. Uh, and San Franciscans who saw themselves as uh, living in the crown city of the West, a great western city, and saw Golden Gate Park as a, a symbol of the promise of the West, uh, began purchasing bison to bring them here. Uh, and to begin a program of breeding those bison uh, to save these endangered species, uh, these icons of America, these symbols of uh, the greatness of the plains and the greatness and grandeur of the West. Uh, and since the 1890s, over uh, 500 calves have been born here in the bison herd, uh, and bison are once again uh, in the 21st century uh, a stable uh, mammal, although much reduced, uh, but living both in private herds uh, and in the nation's national parks uh, once again. Uh, and that future certainly did not seem secure at all uh, in the 1890s when the bison was uh, on the brink of extinction. But one of the other ironies of this story of bison in San Francisco is that while San Franciscans reached out to save this uh, the last remnants and relics of this great species of the Great Plains, a species which uh, never lived in California. Uh, they were heedless and lacked uh, any presence of mind of the age of extinction uh, in their own landscape over which they were uh, presiding. By the 1890s, a California grizzly, the symbol of the state of California, uh, was on the brink of its own extinction and within a couple of decades would have disappeared from the state of California. By the end of the 19th century, dozens of plant and animal species that had lived here for millennia were on the verge of extinction if they were not gone uh, already from the uh, great migrations of whales and of, uh, other uh, marine mammals that lived off the coast or the pelagic birds that occupied the uh, the coastal rookeries and islands, uh, or uh, the plants and animals of the Great Central Valley, which were in that moment being plowed up for uh, a new empire of agriculture in California. And so here in Golden Gate Park, we can see both uh, a reflection of Californians' reverence and awe for nature uh, and for the uh, magnificence of the environment at the same time uh, as they were presiding over uh, heedlessly its transformation and destruction. And so here in Golden Gate Park, we can see Californians historic and I think continuing um, ambivalence towards nature as both a symbol of the state uh, and as a victim of human hopes and dreams uh, often um, unseen an unseen victim of those, those hopes and dreams. So California, the bison in Golden Gate Park.